Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be looking at some of the techniques for management of solid waste. Now, this is a term that has been the buzzword for the last few years. You all would have heard about it because it refers to the collection, the treatment and the disposal of solid discarded material or basically solid waste material. Now, why is this such an important thing? Why, why is it that people in all the cities across the world are looking at good solid waste management practices or effective solid waste management practices? The reason being, whenever there is improper disposal of waste, it ultimately causes environmental degradation. We are adding on to the pollution. Immediately what you see is soil pollution or land pollution. You might have all noticed it in your cities or the towns that you live in. If waste is dumped at the corner of the road, it leads to pollution. A lot of flies start coming over there. You have rodents coming over there. There's more of insects that start you know, breeding over there. These all, the rodents, the insects, these are all carriers of disease. So ultimately, not only does it cause environmental degradation and pollution, it also causes a lot of improper or detrimental health effects because these carriers of disease are now going to spread various communicable diseases. Not only that, from the land, the pollution can even spread to the groundwater. It can, if you burn the waste, it can enter into the air. So pollution can, it can cause air pollution. All of these are detrimental health effects and environmental effects that are associated with improper disposal of waste. So that means we need to make sure that whatever waste is being generated is being disposed of or treated in the right manner. And you all know the problem of waste generation is global. Across the world, the countries, all the countries are struggling with how to handle their waste. Now, there are some countries like the bigger ones like Australia, where they can afford to have landfills. They can have huge areas where they can dump the waste. But that's not the case with respect to many other countries. Like even in India, many of the states do not have excess, excess land where they can go and dump the waste. Not only that, whatever landfills were there have now full. And so they now need to look for other alternatives. One another example is Japan. Japan being a smaller country cannot have huge tracts of land which are being devoted for waste collection or waste treatment. So then there are different methods that are involved. And before we get into the methods, let's just look at some of the important wastes that are generated, which are the important waste generators. And then we will see what are the major techniques of solid waste management. Now you would have seen waste being collected in your towns or the roadside. Some of you may have even seen waste that pops up in the lakes or you know in the, in the on the riverside you might have seen a lot of plastic waste that is getting generated. This is one example of waste that is found in the oceans. Oceans are laden with garbage. There's so much of garbage which is floating or moving through the currents from the coasts into the ocean. Now this is the example of Great Pacific Garbage Patch. It's basically a collection of marine waste, marine debris that is found in the northern Pacific Ocean. Now, this marine debris is basically, you know, the all the waste that is coming into the ocean or the seas from the coastline. This Great Pacific Garbage Patch, if you see over here in the map, it is also known as the Pacific uh, Trash Vortex and it is present it is extending from the western coast of North America. So you can see over here from between the states of uh, Hawaii and California, it is extending from here all the way till Japan. So this is the Japanese coast all the way across over here due to the water currents. All the waste that is present in the ocean is getting pulled in over here, is being sucked in over here. They are converging over here to form this big patch. Now, in some cases, the patch may be seen like this in the oceans, but in, with respect to the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, it's more of microplastics that are present over there. Now, these microplastics are plastics of very small size. They are non-biodegradable. That's why they start accumulating and they are having size which is in microns or micrometers. That's why they're called as microplastics. Microplastics cannot be seen with the naked eye. So you might not see such a pile of garbage like this. My, the microplastics which are present in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, often they'll just be present in the water and the water will look very turbid. It will look very cloudy. It will look like, you know, a thick uh, turbid soup or a thick cloudy soup. And that area is also having along with the microplastics there are also many many bigger trash or bigger garbage which is floating over there like fishing gear or it could be shoes or it could be nets which are floating in the water not only that the garbage patch is not just restricted to the surface 
below the ocean that is in the sea floor that is under the garbage patch there's a huge amount of debris that is going and sinking over there so to the bottom of the ocean if you see there's a large amount of debris that is present over there we still have not been able to find out how much is there how much garbage is there but when we see we know that there is a big vortex over here which is accumulating all the garbage from the nearby areas so this is one example of how improper waste disposal can lead to degradation of our oceans now these are the different waste generators so if you see here it includes residential complexes where you mainly have you know families and from there you have a lot of food waste that is generated you can have paper and cardboards you can have clothes textile waste that is generated there can be a lot of electronics e-waste that is getting generated oil these are some of the common waste that are generated from the domestic setup or from the residential setup when you see industrial setup, the type of waste varies slightly because you have a lot of packaging material that comes in here. Lot of packaging material which is just dumped over there, which can be reused, but then it is dumped over there. There's a lot of food waste that comes. In we even have the waste that is coming from the scrap material, the metal, the tailings which are there, the metal ta tailings which are there during the manufacturing process. All of that is dumped into the waste. Commercially, when we see, that includes the hotels, the restaurants, the shops, the stores, market areas. From these buildings, when we get waste, those wastes again are made up of a lot of, you know, packaging material like cardboard or plastics or paper. There's a lot of food waste that is generated, glass is generated. So these are some examples of the commercial waste. Then we come up to the construction and demolition waste. This mainly includes construction materials like concrete or it could include a lot of you know particulate matter dirt that is generated wood steel these are some of the wood chippings these are some of the common waste that are generated from the construction sites we also have various other municipal services which generate waste that is the services like cleaning of the streets or when there is a you know a, a park being built landscaping being done from the beach areas recreational areas all of these areas also generate a huge quantity of waste which mainly includes again food waste is generated from there a lot of sludge is generated trimmings of the trees and finally from agricultural fields here we what the generated waste includes spoiled foods spoiled uh, you know uh, plants the plants which are diseased in nature we may even have pesticides and fertilizers which are attached to the plant so that again is uh, considered as hazardous waste all of these are examples of the waste generators and what exactly type of solid waste that they generate now to manage this, these solid waste, there are different techniques that are employed. There are many, many techniques. I've just shown you a few of them, few of the important ones. The major important technique that is followed in many of the countries, in many states, but of course, which requires a very large area, is the use of sanitary landfills. Now, sanitary landfills is wherein garbage is dumped on a piece of land. Then that garbage is covered with either clay or sand. So it is sort of sealed with the a clay or sand and you can have multiple such layers till that area is full so that is what you call as a sanitary landfill it is a very uh, you know easy way of managing the waste of course what you need to do here is that you need to have a large area incineration is burning now incineration is one way where you can eliminate the quantity of waste because when you're burning them the quantity of waste sizably reduces but the problem here is that incineration or burning leads to the release of many toxic gases imagine you are burning a plant waste which contains fertilizers when you burn it those fertilizers get converted into compounds that enter into the air so you're basically causing air pollution so incineration is done in many of the countries in in, in even in our country i have seen incineration being used in the countryside domestically people burn their waste but the problem there is that they are adding on to the air pollution volume reduction is something that is done before dumping the waste into the landfill so volume reduction is usually done by shearing where you cut down the pieces or you grind the waste or by compaction you reduce the volume so that they do not occupy much space in the landfills we can even have recycling and biodegradation as waste management techniques in fact these are the only worthy solid waste management techniques these are the this is the only answer reduce reuse and recycle so that those wastes which can be converted into compost can be subjected to biodegradation. So you allow them to be degraded with the help of enzymes or microorganisms into compost. And then that compost is used in the field. 
and whatever cannot be degraded whatever cannot be broken down or converted into something useful you recycle them so that finally the amount of waste that is generated which can neither be recycled nor be degraded only that goes into the landfills that saves us a lot of space that saves us a lot of money as well because you're recycling over here apart from these there are many other alternative uh, waste treatment techniques such as fermentation in some cases pyrolysis is used where high temperature is employed gasification is done but like i said when the quantity of waste is very large these are some of the more um, efficient techniques these are the techniques which can be used now to make sure that in india the solid waste management is being done in the right way we have a set of rules which were put in by the ministry of uh, environment forest and climate change in 2016 so they came up with these solid waste management rules in many of the literature you will find it abbreviated as swm rules swm rules or solid waste management rules are basically a set of guidelines that have to be followed in all the states of india it was notified in april 2016 and before this there were other rules as well there were other acts as well such as the municipal solid waste rules which was in 2000 but then once this solid waste management rule came in that has now superseded all the previous rules so under this solid waste management rules the government is trying to you know it it, it comprises of stakeholders from all the central and state authorities and they are trying to imbibe the the action or you know the segregation of waste at the source so what they are trying to do is they want people or they want establishments if it's a commercial establishment to segregate the waste so that the waste can be channelized into the wealth and they want this to be done at the source so that is what is shown over here in this paper clipping wherein you need to segregate at the source as waste which can be either de biodegrade you know uh, recycled you can convert them that is organic waste can be there so this includes all the vegetable waste or it can be the toilet waste the sanitary waste which is put into the red bin and dry waste which is you put into the blue color bin so based on this you are segregating it into three different bins three different uh, parts where some can be recycled into some other product some of it can be degraded so you can convert that that is the wet waste which can be converted into compost and there is also the sanitary waste which you cannot recycle neither can you reuse so that is considered as the third type of waste under these rules these are some of the main features of this rule under this rule under these solid waste management rules the rules specify the duty of the waste generators that is at the source whether it is a residential complex whether it is a, uh, a domestic setup whether it is a construction area whatever it is wherever the waste is getting generated certain duties have been given to the waste generators basically the duty of the segregation as per rules secondly they have also given duties to the central pollution control board so the central pollution control board along with the government has established a central monitoring committee and the central monitoring committee will is required to meet once every year analyze and examine the enactment of these rules so the central monitoring committee is going to see which all states are actually employing these rules which cities are not following it which cities are following it to the t all of this needs to be done along with the central pollution control board also there have been several treatment facilities that have been set up treatment facilities are for converting the waste that can be converted into something useful so the treatment facilities are different for solid waste the treatment facilities are you know in established in such a way that whatever waste can be converted into wealth that is done there itself before it gets into the landfill so these are some of the salient features of solid waste management rules which were implemented in 2016 which have superseded the municipal solid waste management and handling rules of 2000 by the government of india I hope this video was useful to all of you. This video talks about the solid waste management techniques and the solid waste management rules of 2016. I hope to see you all in the next video as well. Thank you.